Okay, in this video we're going to talk about quadratic functions. And when dealing with quadratic functions, there's a couple ways they can be written. Let's first talk about the standard form formula for a quadratic function. f of x equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. Now, when it's written in this form, the ordered pair hk is actually the vertex. Now, what I mean by vertex? Well, a quadratic function either opens up, it opens upward if a is positive, and it opens downward if a is negative. And so this point, lowest point or highest point on the parabola, which is what this is called, is called the vertex. And then um, you also have an axis that runs down through here, and this is called the axis of symmetry, and that divides the parabola up into two parts. So it, it's basically, the axis is not part of the graph, but it's just a tool that we use. So let's look at a couple of quadratic functions in standard form. Here you can see that 3 is the a term, or a variable. So since it's positive, I know this one opens upward. And now for the h value, you take opposite of this sign. So if this sign is minus, you take the opposite, which is 5. And then for the k, you take the same sign. And this all has to do with how the formula is written. So, so it's plus 3, so k would be 3. So this parabola has a vertex at 5, 3. And the axis is the vertical line that goes through x equal 5. So that would be the axis for that one. Now the next one, um, it has a lead coefficient of negative 2. So since that's negative, I know this parabola opens downward. And since this is plus 1, h is minus 1. And since this is minus 5, a, k is minus 5. So the vertex is the point negative 1, negative 5. And the axis is the vertical line x equal negative 1. And we'll look at a graph here in a minute of a couple of these. Many times your quadratic functions written in kind of a standard form like this, where it's ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, where a is the coefficient of the x squared term, b is the coefficient of the x, and then c is just the constant. Kind of like this one here. Now, what you can do in that case is you can actually convert this back into the standard form up here. By, by completing the square. Now, it's easiest when the coefficient is 1. If the coefficient of this term is 1, then it's really pretty easy to complete the square. Because what you do is you look at the coefficient of the x term, which is negative 6, and you take half of that, so you just multiply it by 1 half, and then you square it. So half of negative 6 is negative 3, and then negative 3 squared is 9. Well, then what you're going to do is you're going to actually add 9 to these two terms. That completes the square. But you can't just willy-nilly add 9 without doing something to balance it out. So we're going to take 9 away from this term, the 3. So this is, this is what it's going to look like. So we took the x squared minus 6x and we added 9. And then to keep it balanced, we took the 3 and subtracted 9. So now this is now a perfect square and we can write it as x minus 3 quantity squared, and then 3 minus 9 is minus 6. Now, once I have it in that form, I know a is 1. There's an imaginary 1 right here, so it's positive, so I know it opens up. I know it has a vertex of 3, negative 6, and so here's the, the vertex, 3, negative 6, and it has uh, axis x equal 3, so there's the axis going down through there. And then the domain of all quadratic functions are just all real numbers. And the range depends on um, which way it opens. If it opens up, then the range would be from the lowest number, negative 6, up to infinity, because the graph goes up forever. So the range would be negative 6 to infinity. Okay. Now let's look at one that's a little more complicated. This second one here is a little more complicated because of this negative 3. But what we can do is we can factor a negative 3 out of each of these terms. So let's factor a negative 3 out. And in the parentheses here, when I factor a negative 3 out, I'm left with positive x squared minus 4x plus 1. Now, we're going to work completely inside the parentheses until the last step. 
So forget about the negative 3, but we do have to bring it down each time, but let's not worry about it. So I look at this and do just what I did over here. I take the coefficient of x, which is negative 4. I take half of it, which gives me negative 2. Then I square it and get 4. Now I'm going to add 4 to these two terms. So I take these two terms and I add 4. Now remember I had a 1 right here, so i got to take away 4 from that 1. Now remember I'm still working inside the outer parentheses there. Okay. Now x squared minus 4x plus 4 is now a perfect square trinomial. So that's, that factors in x minus 2 quantity squared. And 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Now here's the last step that we got to remember to do. Remember all of this is inside this parentheses. To get it into the final form that we want, we have to distribute the negative 3 times this binomial squared and then times this constant. Well, you can't multiply the negative 3 inside to the square, but you can say negative 3 times x minus 2 quantity squared. And then you have to say negative 3 times negative 3 to get plus 9. Okay, now, since this is a negative, we know it opens down. From here we know that h is 2, and from here we know that k is 9. So the vertex is the point 2, 9. The axis is the line x equal 2, and the domain is all real numbers. And then let's look at the graph to get the, get the range. Notice that uh, the vertex is 2, 9. Okay, and now um, it opens down, so the range would actually start way down here at negative infinity and go all the way up to 9. So the range is negative infinity to 9. Those are just a couple of other points that you can, like if you wanted to plug in 0 um, to get and get an x value, uh, you could plug 0 into this, get minus 3, and if you plug 4 in, you get minus 3, and you know, that's just a couple of points. If you wanted to get some more points on the graph, you could just pick some points near the uh, the x value of 2, and then you could get a couple other points on the graph. But that's how you graph that. Now, the good news is, is you do not have to find the vertex this way. There's actually a vertex formula that we can talk about. Okay, so here's what's fun about the vertex formula. To get h, all you have to do is do this calculation, minus b over 2a. And then once you get that number, since that's going to be the x value of the vertex, you know you, know you can get the corresponding y value by just plugging that number into the function. So use this formula to get x, or the h value, and then plug it back into the function to get the y value, which is the k. So let's see. Let's, let's do that. Here is the one we just did. Now, a is minus 3, b is 12, and c is negative 3. We don't really need it, but that's what c is. So now if I do minus b, that would be minus 12 right here, and then divide it by 2a, so I get 2 times negative 3. Well, that's going to be negative 12 over negative 6, which is 2. Now, to get the y value, just plug 2 back into the function. So just go up here and say negative 3 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2 minus 3 and see what you get. And you can do that yourself, but you'll get 9. So you'll get the point 2, 9. And remember, that's the same thing we got up here when we did it by completing the square. Now, um, what's interesting is that a quadratic function is one function that we can determine the minimum and maximum of without calculus. Um, for instance, this function, we know it opens down. So if it opens down, it has a maximum. Okay, and the maximum is just right there where the vertex is. So since we already know the vertex is the point 2, 9, then we know the maximum is 9. Remember, the maximum is the altitude or height. So y represents the height. So the maximum would be y equal 9, and it occurs when x is 2. You go ahead and do this one on your own and see if you can get the vertex using the vertex formula and then um, once you get the vertex, you'll see that this one also opens down, and so it's going to have a maximum of that y value of the vertex, which is 123, and it occurs when x is negative 18. Okay.
Now I'm going to do a couple of application problems next. I'm probably not going to do all of them, but I'll do a couple of them for you. Okay, this one says a pool is treated with a chemical to reduce algae. The amount of algae in the pool two days after treatment is given by this quadratic function. How many days after treatment will the pool have the least amount of algae, and what is the least amount of algae? Well, I'm just going to use the vertex formula. I know this is a parabola, and I know it opens up, so it must have a minimum. Okay, so to find that minimum, I need the vertex. So since b is minus 300, I can do minus b over 2a. So I have minus negative 300 over 2a. a is 30. So that's going to give me 300 over 60, which is 5. And now to get the y value, i got to plug 5 back into the function. So when I plug 5 back into the function and evaluate it, i got 450. So the answer to my problem is that we have the minimum amount of algae after 5 days, and the amount of algae, and I don't know, what you call algae, 450 units of algae at five days. Okay? Now, let's look at another one. Um, suppose the revenue earned on sending parcels, that's packages, is X times P, where P, where X is the number of parcels and P is the price per parcel. Now, suppose this price per parcel varies depending on how many parcels you send. So let's say the price is $3 minus 10 cents per parcel. So in other words, if you sent 10 parcels, uh, what's 10 times 10 cents a dollar? If you sent 10 parcels, then the price per parcel would be $2. But let's see how we can do this. Well, revenue is X times P. So we can take X times the price formula. And then if I distribute the X, I get revenue as minus 0.1X squared plus 3X. Now, this is a quadratic function that opens down. So it's going to have a maximum. So b is 3, a is negative 0.1. So I can do minus b over 2a, and I plug that into the calculator, and I got 15 parcels. So this one just asked for the number of parcels. It didn't actually ask for the maximum. But if you want to know the maximum revenue, just plug 15 into this revenue function for x. I'll let you do three on your own. Freeze the video if you need to and read it. But basically, you were given a function, and it asked you to find if it said when will the function hit the ground. So to hit the ground, I had to use the I had to set the function equal to zero, and I used the quadratic formula to find the zeros of the function, which was 8.2 seconds. And then I used the vertex formula to calculate the maximum height. I calculated the x value of the vertex first to get the number of seconds that takes to reach maximum height. And then I plugged it in to the function to get the actual maximum height. Um, here's another one that you can look at and read it on your own. Um, just to make a long story short, um, we know that this particular fencing, there's four W's here, four pieces of fence going this way, and there's two pieces of fence here. So we know that 4w plus 2l has to equal 400. But if you solve for l from that formula, you get l equals minus 2w plus 200. We're asked to actually maximize the area. Area is l times w. So since I know l is minus 2w plus 200, I can put that in for l here, and I get minus 2w plus 200 times w. Then if you distribute the w, you get minus 2w squared plus 200w. And then um, using the vertex formula, I can find that W would be 50. And then plugging 50 back in for L, I can find that L would be 100. So the dimensions would be 50 by 100. And there's another hypothetical question you can ask. And I'm just going to leave you with this final one here that shows you how to graph uh, quadratic functions. Uh, I'm going to do another video that, for this section that talks about rational functions. But for now, graphing quadratic functions, you just put everything that we learned together here. You know, the vertex, the axis, which way it opens, the maximum. You can find the y-intercepts and x-intercepts if they're available. And then you can also plug in some other points. And then once you put it all together, you can get a decent graph of the function.